Hi everybody, this is going to be a really quick video. I just wanted to show you what I learned today, which I learned how to rotate chips in Python. So I'll go ahead and show you what we're going to, then I'll show you the Python code in just a second. So and I have this code on GitHub. I'll put the link in the video description. And give this just a second. To, it's on my list to learn how to do a progress bar. That's tomorrow's lesson. If I learn too much in one day, my head explodes. But for uh, I thought this worked out pretty well. For the first time I built this chip rack, I had manually just kind of scrambled all the chips by just kind of rotating the Z a little bit, what I thought looked random, but that was kind of a pain. Plus, my chips ended up kind of oblong. Somehow I had messed with them, or which is the, the moral to the story is the less I do an iClone, the better. Let it do everything. And click here just to show you. Sorry, give it a second. Then it, then I just click here and it. Uh, I should have done it by now. Okay, so there we go. So I need to put a progress bar. That's the one thing I need to do. But it does a pretty good job of uh, scrambling all the chips. And then, you know, the one. What's the point of scrambling them if you don't have the unscramble? So the unscramble is actually easier because you just set it to zero. Where the scramble uses some Python uh, random number logic I wrote today in my little uh, two hours of learning Python. Well, I had looked at it a couple of times and never gotten very far. Today I just kind of dove in, or yesterday I started this and kind of, I spent a day renaming 312 chips and I did 32 wrong, so I basically renamed chips for four hours today. But the writing the Python only took about a Click that. There we go. So that's how well we let me go ahead and show you. Now, if you don't have obviously the chip image here, you can just use any cylinder, but I'll go ahead and show you the Python code. It's really simple to learn. Now, here's the method that is the, the logic, and I'll go explain this in just a second, but first I'll show you how easy it is to. This is why each uh, chip stack took about five minutes to or less to write, but here's the red chips. All it does is it set the prop name, and here each chip. I build the chip name is just going to be like red chip, red chip one, red chip two, etc. With the exception of red chip 51, because red chip 51 is actually the first chip of the short stack, which is the parent of all of these. I could have rotated it, but I just didn't. I thought it'd be faster if I didn't. And then go back to our little uh, code here. This is Visual Studio. You can download it for free, or you can use Notepad if you want. I like uh, the line numbers. Is why I like. You don't have to count if Python tells you error in line 11 or 51. You don't have to sit there and count in Notepad, but you can use Notepad if you. I did a few times. Anyway, and then just to show you the the rest of the chips, only the green chip and the red chips have two stacks. That's the only ones with this little if block. The rest of them, like this, is even less code. Oops, I didn't mean to collapse that. And that's a really simple for loop. All it is. This is all the the kind of the block that executes for each number between two. And our sum, you know, different chips have different number of chips. So it's, you know, it's really simple. And then I'll go over really the last part of this is our little rotate chip method, which here it just finds the prop, which I found some examples in the Reillusion documentation. And then here I get the transform, which is just, I guess it's an object that has all the transform attributes for this prop. And then here's the data block, the data block, which if the data block is as far as I can understand so far is just the animation sequence or anything that the prop does in your project. And then here I did a random value and it's not really hard coded. I'll put a change my little comment. Uh, just used two large primes and got the modulus, which is what I was going to say is, oops, uh, you know, uh, by dividing by 59, well, the remain, the modulus of 59, so actually just the remainder, and then by subtracting 29, it either goes left or right, about zero to 29, uh, whatever that called radians, which I'll explain in just a second. That's the last uh, part down here, which I learned. And here is just, I print the random value. You don't have to have this, but if you open the console log, it's useful in determining if one of your chips is not named correctly, which by the time this is in the marketplace, this is all fixed. But for me, it was useful because I had renamed the chips. I made a few errors because I was playing chess while I did some or doing other stuff. 
just to get it all done because it took forever. And then the very last thing, go back to our little code here, is all it does is it, this is actually where it performs the rotation. So here it does it. This is, I'm doing everything on frame zero. I haven't decided to do, a, you know, we'll do a animations and motions on day three of my learning Python adventures. But in here, the very last property is instead of using um, an integer or a double value for the where to how much to rotate they use radians and here's a constant which is I imagine it has something to do with 360 divided by pi or times pi or something that really smart people came up with 2,000 years ago that I still couldn't do today with a computer so but that's my short little video but I thought that worked uh, pretty well because the very first time I did this I did it by hand and it was like it didn't take that long but rotating 300 props is uh I probably didn't rotate 300. I think I made some copies, like I got to 10, and then, but I still, I still, my next thing I want to learn is renaming lots of props, because that way that would save me, you know, that's kind of my vision of the future. One day your computer says, let me do that. Go, go outside, go jogging, or come back, and I'll have this done, but we haven't quite gotten to that far in our uh, computer technology. This is, it's not the fastest thing, but it's, uh, fairly fast. It'd probably be a little faster if my scene was just this chip rack while I was doing this instead of in this big scene, which I did get it down to three tables instead of, I had uh, seven, there it finished finally, but I had six at one point and it got too slow. It would open for me eventually, but it was like seven or eight minutes and then I got rid of three tables and the dealer I'm gonna just have instructions for how to load him because I think if I load the the dealer with it, it it adds an extra minute or two. And I've got a 1080 Ti, which is not the fastest today, but some people have slower than that. So I want to make it. To me, if it takes longer than five minutes to load, it's too slow. So they can always make their own copies. That's why I figure it's, it's kind of dumb for me to include seven, you know, six or seven tables, even though the room will hold it. But you know, if you have a what do they call the Titan or some super fast 3080 you know, Ti coming out, then it'll probably be a piece of cake, which I hope I get a job and I'll buy one of those someday soon. But all right, well, have a good evening. My dog needs to go out and we're going to go grab some dinner. Thanks for watching.